Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about energy. We're going to specifically introduce what energy is and what the different forms are that it can take. And then we're going to talk about the units using to measure energy. And lastly, we'll do some unit conversions involving energy. All right, so first of all, what is energy? Well, energy is the ability to do work. And so here you can see the Hoover Dam, and it has a whole bunch of water stored back here. And as the water drops down and comes out here, it actually spins a turbine, which generates electricity, which goes and is distributed around the dam to do work. And so you can think of energy, like the energy stored in that water behind the dam, as the ability to do work. Now, it doesn't just have to do with uh, power plants or science examples, you yourself control how much energy you take in and how much energy you put out every day, right? We know that exercise uses energy and that eating food brings in energy to your body. And that's exactly the same sort of process. When you say, I feel like I don't have much energy today, you're saying, I feel like I can't do much work. And that could come from a low caloric intake, right? So you're actually really familiar with energy. Okay, now energy can come in a couple different forms. In this case, that water stored behind the dam is what's called potential energy. That is, it's sitting still, and it could do work because of where it's at. It's high up. And so the definition of potential energy is energy that has to do with position or arrangement. Energy that has to do with position or arrangement. That sounds a little funny, but basically it's saying, look, if you have something that's high up, then it could potentially fall and release a lot of energy. And those arrangements could be with gravity, as in stuff being high up away from Earth, or it could be with magnets. Two magnets could be far away from each other, and as you bring them together, you could get out work. Or it could be with electric charges. All of these would be having to do with position and would be potential energy. On the other hand, as the water races down that dam, or as the water races down this waterfall, we have what's called kinetic energy, which is energy that has to do with motion energy that has to do with motion. And some of this water actually has potential and kinetic energy. So like right here, for example, it's falling and that's kinetic energy. It still has more to fall. So it's still kind of high up. So that's potential energy. So something can have kinetic energy and potential energy at the same time. And that's no problem. On the other hand, way up here where it's still before it goes off the river or before it goes off the waterfall, most of that uh, energy up there is potential right? Because it's not moving very fast. And if something's not moving at all, it has only potential energy. Okay, so that's kinetic and potential energy. But how do we measure how much energy is there? If something's going really fast or is really high up, it has more energy. And we can measure that. The energy unit you're probably most familiar with is calorie, right? So if you look at the back of a nutritional information on a candy bar, you'll see that it contains 200 calories, which is the amount of energy that you can get out from it. Now it turns out those calories and, quote, science calories are slightly different, which is pretty annoying, and we'll talk about that in more detail in a second. This calorie that I'm listing here, the definition of it is the amount of energy needed to warm one gram of water one degree Celsius. Now, you don't need to memorize that definition, but just know that this is a slightly different unit of energy than the calorie on your candy bar. The abbreviation for this guy is just C-A-L, so that's how we abbreviate it. And very often, you'll see kilocalories. Kilocalories. Sometimes called kcals, because that's how we abbreviate it. And one kilocalorie, or one kcal, is equal to a thousand calories, or a thousand cal, if we use the abbreviation. Okay, now, it's important for you just to know how to do kilo to non-kilo conversion. So whenever you see kilo something goes to something, we always know that one kilo something is equal to a thousand of whatever that is. So one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. One kilo meter is equal to a thousand meters. So you can plug in whatever you want there. And that relationship is true. Generally, this stuff you have to memorize. So you have to just know that going into a test or quiz. Whereas the other energy conversions uh, I would give to you. So for example, a food calorie, which we mentioned a second ago, is actually just equal to exactly one kilocalorie. So that means when you look at the back of that candy bar and it says 200 calories, if we were being more careful with the units, it's actually 200 kilocalories, which by the way means it contains 200,000 calories. That's a lot of calories. Okay, so food calories and calories slightly different. 
which is pretty annoying. Now, I, in my class, always specifically list food next to the calories. But some textbooks will say, okay, if you see a capital C, the capital C-A-L as opposed to the lowercase C-A-L, the capital C-A-L is supposed to be the food calorie. Okay, lastly, we're going to be measuring energy in joules. Joules is a slightly smaller unit of energy than calories, so there's 4.184 joules in one calorie. And again, you might see kilojoules, so one kilojoule is equal to, wait, what should it be? How many joules? One kilo is equal kilo thing is equal to a thousand of those things. So you also see that in kilojoules. Okay, let's actually go through a few conversions. Okay, so we're going to convert each of the following into kilojoules. First of all, we have 3.327 joules. We're going to use the conversion factors we see down here, and we're going to go to kcals. So first, we want to divide by joules and multiply by calories. We know that there's 4.184 joules in one calorie. That will put us out of joules into calories. And then we need to go to kilocalories. So we want to go to kcals and cancel out calories. And remember, there's a thousand of the whatever and one kilo whatever. And then I type that on my calculator. When I do that, I'm going to put 0.327 divided by 4.184 and then divided by a thousand. So when we do that, we're going to get 7.85, oops, I'm sorry, 7.8154 times 10 to the minus 5. So not many kilocalories. And then we need to round to sig figs. We had one, two, three sig figs going in, so we're going to need to round this to three sig figs. So that's going to round to 7.81 times 10, ooh, not 8182, times 10 to the minus 5 kcals. All right, so that's how we could convert from joules to kilocalories. This next problem asks us to convert from kilojoules to joules. So there's a number of ways to do this. We'll do this using the conversion factors I actually have written out here, which means before I want to can use this joules one, I got to get it from kilojoules to regular old joules. So I want to get rid of kilojoules and go to joules. There's a thousand of the joules and one kilojoule. Now that I'm in joules, I just like I did above, want to go to calories. So one calorie, 4.184 joules. Now I'm in calories and I want to go to kilocalories. So again, just like above, I'm going to cancel out the calories and go to kcals, which means 1,000 and 1. So then I'm going to take 18, multiply by 1,000, divide by 4.184, and then divide by 1,000. And I get 4.3021 kcals. Again, we went around for sig figs. Here we want two sig figs. So that's going to give me just 4.3 kcals. Okay, last conversion. It's our easiest one. We want to go from food calories to kilocalories. Well, remember, one food calorie just is a kilocalorie. So I could write the conversion factor if I want to. One food calorie is equal to one kcal. All right, and then I'm just going to get out 12.23 kcals. So those are just the same, no change there. And I had four sig figs here and I have four sig figs there, so I'm all set. So that's how you go through conversions with the different energy units. That's what energy is, at least briefly. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions, you can ask those below.